Hey everyone, Bob here, KD4BMG HOA Ham. With 4th of July quickly approaching and Flag Day today, I decided to purchase a $15 flagpole from Amazon, attach it to the side of the house, and see if I could make contacts here in the HOA stealth using a flagpole. And because today's video is sponsored by Chameleon Antenna, their URT1 remote tuner. But will it make contacts? Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. Okay, I think I got you. Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. QSL, you're 5757 Tampa, Florida. Roger, thank you for finding seven, my friend. You're also 5757 there, my friend. QSL, thanks for the contact, friend. 73. 73, take care. And I hope to catch you again real soon. And I'll say to you, hello. That was Mike One Echo Mike Charlie in Wiltshire, England. So yes, this flagpole slash antenna can make contacts. It's not advertised as an antenna. I converted it to an antenna. It's metal. It has continuity. It's an antenna. Why would I make a video like this? I live in a home that happens to be governed by a homeowners association. I like playing radio, I like emergency preparedness, and I like where I live, so I find ways to operate in spite of the challenges. Some of you might live in a rental home, some of you might live in an apartment building, and I think even in some of those cases, your landlord or those who govern and manage your rental property, your townhouse, they might allow this type of flagpole to be installed on the outside of your home. It is possible that you could have an antenna that works right where you live. I'm gonna show you how to set it up. I'm going to show you why I chose to use this specific tuner and we'll make some more contacts along the way. Okay, uh, two stations. Uh, uh, I heard a, a VE station in Ontario, but uh, I think the Kilo Delta station was first, so I'll pick you up. Uh, give me your call once again. This is Kilo 4 Fox Hotel, India. Over. This is Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf, Bob in Tampa, Florida. Over. Okay, five business, Bob in Tampa, Florida. Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. Fine business, Bob. Uh, and your signal here is uh, five by six. Uh, I, I was just talking to Pensacola. There seems, uh, seems to be an opening to Florida. Uh, it's not great, but um, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, yeah. it's not a great opening, but uh, you're five by six here, Bob. Over. I hear those fingertips clicking away on the keyboards in the comment section, Bob. This is a compromised antenna. I'll grant you this, it's unconventional for sure. But for those who can finally put up a flagpole permanently where they live that doubles as an antenna, this is golden. I'll leave a link in the description below where you could pick up this flagpole from Amazon. It doesn't matter whether you buy this one or another one of your liking, and it doesn't matter whether it's Amazon or whatever your favorite retailer is. Just get something that has continuity. Don't go for something that's painted, otherwise you're going to have to scuff up the surface to get conductivity from section to section. I purposely went after a stainless steel model that was not painted, and I hoped it wasn't clear-coated. And you could see, as I was checking conductivity as multiple sections were put together, I'm golden. Here I'm checking the conductivity, the continuity of the mount, and there is none. So either it's the material or this has a coating on it, and I'm just going to not worry about that. I'll install this onto the wall, and then I'll attach my wire from the tuner right into the flagpole, the stainless tubing itself. Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf, your 58 Tampa, Florida. Roger, I got you. Kilo Delta 4 Mike uh, Bravo Mike uh, Golf. Ah, uh, Bob, this is Wendy Papa Fort Tango to the Golf. Are you doing it today, gentlemen? So you're 588, you're 57 of Puerto Rico. QSL, thanks for the contact, friend 73. Uh, 
Roger, roger. You have a blast. The installation of this flagpole is very simple. It requires only basic handyman skills. You younger folks out there, wear hearing protection. I'm an older guy now, and I wish someone would have told me that when I was younger. I'm not invincible. Once you get four holes drilled in your wall, I have a concrete block stucco home, so I use the specific type of bit and specific types of fasteners. You choose what's appropriate for your property and your house. Do realize all the stress on this six foot flagpole is going to be right here on this bracket. The one I purchased has an adjustable tilt on it, so I could tilt it up or down depending on what I'm trying to accomplish. Make sure all four sections, five sections, however many there are with yours, are fully tightened because that creates the continuity. Remember I said earlier the bracket did not have continuity, so I'm just trying to get this on the wall and then go from my tuner up to the pole itself so that I can drill a hole right here at the base of those uh, stainless steel sections and attach a wire there just above where the bracket is. I'm using this hole punch. It creates a little divot in the side of that tubing. If you just try to take a tiny drill bit and drill a hole in this tubing, your drill bit will slide off. So you may hear a clicking sound. This is spring loaded and as you push on it, it creates a divot. And now what I have is a starting point, almost a pilot hole for my drill bit and I'll be able to drill into here very easily. I'm drilling a pilot hole that is just slightly smaller than the hardware that I intend to screw into this. Use similar material so that you don't have corrosion and so that it lasts for a long period of time. If this was a permanent install for me, I'd be putting a ring terminal on this. For me, this is a temporary setup. Remember, I show you temporary ideas all the time. I do this to give you ideas to springboard off of. So I just stripped enough of that plastic sheeting off the outside, wrap the wire around the screw, and I'm just tightening that screw in the hole that we drilled on that bottom section of the stainless steel pipe. I want to route this wire above that downspout because that downspout is metal. So I'm going to route my wire between the downspouting and the soffit, both of those aluminum in my case. What I have here is a wire that is about nine and a half feet long. And yep, I MacGyvered it to the window there just to keep it away from the metal downspout. I'm going to attach it now to my URT1 tuner. So I have a six foot flagpole a nine and a half foot piece of wire. So I have a 15 and a half foot piece of antenna, so to speak. What's the propagation going to be like? What's the radiation pattern? I have no clue. Those out there who understand radiation patterns and how to model them, I would love to see somebody model this. How much of my radiation is going out of this wire? How much of it is going out of the ball tip on my flagpole? My flagpole, of course, that uh, doesn't go straight up in the air, but is off at an angle on the house. Give me your thoughts in the comments below. Before I demonstrate and explain why I use the URT1 and tell you what type of tuner you should be looking for, let me remind you, put up the best antenna your money can afford and your space and circumstances will permit. No excuse for being sloppy. If this is all you can put up because this is what your circumstances will limit you to, then this is the best antenna you can use. And quite frankly, I have found it effective, surprisingly. So uh, I was doing some testing on another antenna last night. Didn't quite go to plan. And so I got frustrated, went back to this setup, uh, hooked up my coax here specifically to this tuner and this antenna. The OMIS net 40 meter net was already in process and I thought to myself, can this 15 and a half foot antenna get on the OMIS net? I know the tuner can tune it. I know that all my losses are not coming through my coax because it's matched out there where the antenna is. Let's give it a go. And so for the doubters out there, Juliet, 
of the long shot. How about Whiskey Delta Zero, Alpha November Bravo, Whiskey Delta Zero, Alpha November Bravo, any copy on Kilo Golf 5, Juliet, and your mic. I'm going to need a long string, Jake. I hear you in there, but I got a lot of bleed over from 188. Give me a long string. <laughs> Too much bleed over, sorry about that. I'm going to try one more, I'll probably give it up. Uh, how about uh, Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf? Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. Any copy on Kilo Golf 5, Juliet, India Mike? Kilo Golf 5, Juliet, India Mike. Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. I have you 5959, five, over. Kilo Delta 5959, five, Roger. Roger, Roger. Okay, I got you 55 nickels. 55, 55, Roger. Copy the 55 nickels. Thanks for the contact. Thank you for the contact, KG5. Yeah, I am. I'm going to go, uh, check out Rob. I'm going all the way uh, back to net. Okay, what can I say? It's a 40 meter antenna as well. Actually, when I installed it, I was thinking 10 through 20. I can have an awful lot of fun on 10 through 20 meters, but it worked on 40. I was his third attempt, and I was the contact that he was able to make. He gave me double nickels. I'll take that. Would I install this if I was looking for a 40 meter antenna only or uh, down to 80? No, it wouldn't be my first thought, but it worked. So, uh, I'm happy with that. Let's talk about how to use the tuner. Let's tune up this flagpole antenna, see if we can make some contacts. The bands are not doing so great tonight, but I do see some activity on 20 meters. We're going to go over to 20. I'm going to send a carrier down range, 10 watts. Hit the tune button, hold it for two to four seconds, and then we'll check and see if we have a good SWR. We're looking good. I did check this frequency beforehand and we were clear. KD4 BMG for identification. Now let's see if we can make some contacts. I didn't show it, but I was depressing the PTT button at that 10 watt constant carrier and that's how you achieve the tune. And as soon as I tuned only in a couple of seconds, I went back to a 100 watt single sideband. The type of tuner you want is remote. Because this is a compromised antenna, if I can get my tuner at the antenna and get my match out there, that means the only loss I have on my coax would be the quality of coax that I choose to use versus an in-shack tuner where I'm getting more losses when I'm using a non-resonant antenna. So I've done multiple reviews on this chameleon antenna tuner. Somebody stated in one of the comments that eh, this is just a matte tuner made for chameleon. That's a captain obvious statement. It is that, but it is so much more than that. Let me tell you why I prefer this. Forget about the fact that it has lots of memories. The fact that it covers all of the amateur radio bands, that's a given. If it didn't have that, I wouldn't be interested in it. So if you're going to invest in a tuner, make sure you get that. Make sure you have something that can be remote, cover all the ham bands, has lots of memory. So after you tune one time, the next time you go back and it's a split second to achieve your tune. The unique thing about the Chameleon unit, I would say that sets it apart from all others, and it's what sets it apart even from all other mat tuners, is the fact that you don't need any control cable and it will work with any transceiver. I use this with my QRP rigs here in the shack. Sometimes I just like to get out my QRP rig and run it here in the shack on one of my non-resonant antennas external. So I can have the tuner external on a non-resonant antenna, the control box inside the shack, and attach it to any one of my transceivers. The transceiver doesn't do any of the, the intelligent stuff here. All the intelligence is in the inside control box. It's a bias T configuration. So it's sending the tune signal over the shield of your coax and that's how it's accomplishing the tune. So that's why I use the Chameleon Antenna Tuner and mostly because it can work with any amateur radio transceiver that you would choose to purchase and make an investment in. So ultimate adaptability. I lay awake at night thinking about my next antenna installation. 
I just try to come up with unique ways to try things that could help you, and that would be enjoyable for me. This one worked far better than I ever anticipated. I've even thought about making it a permanent install, but I have other things I want to do with that URT one. Either way, for now, the portamast in the backyard with a long wire coming down to a matching unit has a friend and a companion for Flag Day and for the 4th of July. I hope this gives you an idea of something that potentially you could do in your shack and your operating conditions, no matter how challenging the circumstances you find yourself in. Perhaps you'll be able to put up a flagpole and convert it to an antenna. And if not, just use this to springboard to the next best idea. Hope you found this useful, friend. I'll talk to you soon. 73.